Okay, this is a video for all the people that thought once I start working with Kistler, you're never going to see any more budget stuff on this channel. So uh, today I have the Mavlos Plume in here and we're going to unbox it. Second half of this video, we'll go out and get some initial impressions. So let's get to it. Uh -uh, put my glasses on so I don't cut my fingers. Now, the Mavlos Delicacy is a rod that I really like, and and I've uh, I've done a handful of videos on it. And Mavlos reached out to me and said, "Hey, we like your videos. We like what you said about the delicacy. We like what you said about the delicacy. And so, can we send you the plume?" And so they did send me this. I did not pay for it, but they have no say in the video, and they don't get to see it before I'm done with it. So. Uh, nice PVC shipping container. Good bit of padding to the, to this uh, to this case, so that's nice. Now I am somewhat familiar with this design. It's a very lightweight, ultra light design. Ooh. And yeah, I mean it, it it definitely definitely feels lightweight. Let me get the other piece out of here. Okay, so. This is the plume. So this is, it's pretty much a full carbon build. Uh, it's supposed to come in at 53 and a half grams. So we'll weigh it and see what it comes, see what it weighs. Uh, the, you can see a lot of the, a lot of the cross wrap uh, appearance on, on this. This is the C6, C602 ultralight. It's a super high sensitive. It's rated for 0 0.6 to 8 grams. Uh, and, you know, so it's right around a, a six foot model. Uh, it does say that it's got Fuji guides. Uh, the new concept slim O-ring. So it's interesting that the, the guides here at the beginning are a little larger than some, but they look like they get down to a proper micro guide down here at the end. Oh, this lens doesn't focus real close. Uh, they, they do look like they get down to a proper micro guide. I'm going to be careful with this because I am inside. I don't want to break anything right off the bat. Uh, every, everything looks like it's it's uh, pretty well lined up. This doesn't seem like it's going to be a really fast tip. So it's probably moderate fast. Some people really like the sort of the, the, the solid handle design. I, I think there are some people that think of it as a, as a more, I don't know, modern look. I do tend to like the cork. I like the way the cork feels. I'm going to do a lot of trout fishing with this probably. So we'll see how this, this handle does in cold conditions as well. Tomorrow I don't think it's supposed to be especially cold. It'll probably be in the 50s Fahrenheit. You know, the finish on it feels pretty good. You know, same thing with, uh, you know, a lot of the, the budget rods. It looks like a, a solid wrap. You know, they're, they're, they're mass produced and stuff like that. But I don't see anything on it that really concerns me. You can see that the spiral wrap goes up until um, about halfway up the, the second half. And then you get into more of the solid. So far, it the fit and finish feels pretty nice. Let's see how a, how a reel fits on this. What do I want to put on here? You know, since this is just a pretty much a black rod, I'm going to go ahead and throw. I got to get a little bit more fishing in with the with the flight feather, and uh, so it's probably a good rod to, to to put it on because it, you know, it it's just black and so that color will go pretty nice on there. Uh, that new cormorant might look pretty awesome on here if you if uh, you know, because it sort of has that stealth black look. So. Even though it is a, a pretty, pretty light design, um, it, it, it doesn't. It's it's not greatly balanced. It, it wants to wants to fall over. Again, I'm not going to compare this to my Kistler rods directly because you know this goes for like eighty six or eighty nine dollars on Amazon. It goes for seventy two on AliExpress. You order from Amazon, you're probably going to get it several weeks faster uh so you know so that's something to consider at least here in the u.s uh you know it feels good overall again it's it's not it's not perfectly balanced uh so it 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 does want to 
you know, if I hold it like this, it wants to sort of go tip up. Uh, if I hold it back a little bit farther, it wants to go tip down very easily. You know, there's nothing going on here on the handle. Uh, the, there, it's basically fully uh, exposed here. So you have the two-piece reel seat, and it just looks like exposed blank through here. I can't see how this would be complete through blank because the blank to this point is one size. This is much larger. Uh, so there, I, I don't know if this is... You know, I'm not going to tear it apart. So I, I'm assuming the blank goes into here, and then this is a second piece that goes from the, the back. So your sensitivity will probably... You know, I don't know how much more you're going to pick up from here. So let's go out on the water. We're going to go after some trout because this is rated for a little bit lighter weight. Uh, we'll see how it feels working lures up to like five grams or so. We'll grab a couple spoons that are down around that, that 1.2, 1.5 gram range and we'll see how it works out. Okay, so it's not 50 degrees this morning. It was 38. It's in the, it's about 42 right now. Uh, sun's coming up though. It'll warm up. You know, as is always with this spot, highly pressured the spot that I wanted to start at. Somebody already there. So I'm going to go down here. We will try a variety of different lures. So I'm going to be starting with this Panther Martin spinner. It's around four grams. You know, the thing is, is that it, uh, it probably catches more trout when they're biting for me than anything else. So plus I'll be able to feel the thump on the rod. So it'll be a good first test of sensitivity. One of the first things I noticed is like, well, there's no hook keeper, and I've sort of gotten used to that, so just hook it on the eyelet there. I can definitely feel the, uh, I can feel the blade spinning. A little bit of color to the water, which is awesome. It's actually, it's like there might even be a little bit of flow we haven't had much of this year which is why the spot that I was wanting to go to pretty good all the time but it definitely been good lately because with no flow uh, and the other side of it is that other spot has um, definitely has less leaves because of the flow so this uh, crankbait from Caperlin so I think it's three and a half grams, if I remember correctly. Should be a good color and design for trout. It's floating. I think any bass or crappie that are in here might hit it as well. So along the bank, it digs in a little bit. You know, so far, even though I haven't really, uh, haven't had any bites, haven't caught anything, the rod feels pretty nice. It's comfortable in the hand. <clears throat> Casting seems pretty effortless. So look how much the tip is loading just from, just from the crankbait. It does seem to have pretty good sensitivity. I'm, I'm going to fish a little bit of Couple, couple like almost like Ned Rig style stuff here in a minute. <clears throat> See if we can feel what's going on on the bottom. Hopefully we'll get a few bites. But okay, before I go to bottom contact, I figure I'd just go to this little two gram spoon. Okay, so now we're going to get into approach I haven't used before, but we get into a 132nd ounce tungsten jig head, and I'm going to put some of these trout garlic scented fireworms on, see if we can't get a bite on, on the bottom, because they're not hitting anything moving. These really do smell like garlic. Hmm. So by the way, this setup would weigh right at 132nd of an ounce, plus that the the plastic. You know, this is going to be right around one gram.
downside of fishing an exposed hook. I mean, that's not a bad cast for one gram. This thing looks pretty awesome in the water, too. With the water being a little lower than normal, I can see that there are some rocks over here. So the sensitivity is good. It's decent, but coming across those rocks, I really felt like I would feel the, feel the lure landing on the rocks, you know, because I'm not fishing just completely slack line, but I'm not feeling anything when it hits. Like right there, I can see it hitting rock. So, you know, it doesn't have like the, the elite sensitivity that you get out of a higher end rod, that's for sure, but it does seem pretty good. Like I've been feeling when you bump into things, even with the, when I hit the leaves, with the line you can feel especially when I hit it with the um, with the braid I can definitely feel it hitting I'd really like to feel a bite but based on how often the other dudes tying stuff on too it's it's a tough day so far as far as this rod being rated down to 0.6 grams uh, the delicacy was down around that range too and I found it to be pretty accurate. I think this one is pretty accurate as well. <laughs> well, had one follow. Maybe they want to move in faster. So the fact that he chased that, I'm gonna switch over to this Rapala X-Rep, uh, and uh, it should be like a slow sink with the snap on there. It's a pretty good suspender. Uh, so we'll fix that a little bit. I wanna see how jerkbait does on the rod anyway, but looks like they want something moving, but maybe not something moving fast. So let's give this a try. The leaves are still wrecking havoc and the wind picking up a little bit. It's like the blowing the leaves right into me. It's making it a little challenging to fish exactly where I want to. I'll tell you what the cool thing is, this spoon casts a mile. I think it's right around four and a half grams as well. It's the Euro Tackle Live Target Spoon, or Live Spoon maybe. So I can feel it ticking little things in the water, which I'm assuming is probably uh, leaves, submerged leaves. So like I said, the sensitivity is pretty good. I just, I, I thought it would be a little bit better on the bottom contact stuff. more casts with this yo-yoing yo it. Uh, I definitely caught, felt like I caught bottom there. Um, I don't feel that anything is on the spoon right now, like on the hooks, but we'll see when it gets in here. So look at this, literally the other guy just walked out and pulled out and then there's another guy walking in. I didn't even get a chance to go there and fish it. Nope, had one follow on a pink worm and that's about it. Got two on a uh, black spinner yesterday. Yeah, that's why I started with. That usually does pretty well here. And so I figured since it followed a pink worm, I'd switch over to like copper and red. Yeah. See if I can get anything that way, but it's been a little slow. The water is definitely moving less than it was the last time I was here, but it was like one of the only places with moving water. That definitely felt like a fish right there. 
kind of almost felt like I like bumped into a fish rather than getting a bite. Okay, I think this is the last thing we're throwing on. Because this fall, like every single time I've thrown this crankbait on, it has caught fish. You know what's interesting? Right in here, I can see a trout. So I'm talking about like they're definitely looking to be in the current, even if I hooked them there. I'm not sure how I, there's multiple in there. There's actually a handful. I'm not throwing this lure in there. If you could find some current, I think you would find some fish. It's right over in, I don't know if I'm pointing, you might've seen it right there. There's a handful of fish right here in this little pocket above the dam. Oh, what the heck, let's give it a try. This is one of those times that the polarized glasses are making all the difference because when I took my glasses off to put the, uh... Oh. I, uh, I couldn't see those fish. It's protected all around, I'm trying to cast in there. It's just going to, oh thought I had one. Uh, trying to cast in there is going to be next to impossible and then even if I do get in there landing a fish out of there is not going to happen on super ultra light. That tells you a lot you know when you see when you see fish gathering in current uh, and you're fishing slow water and uh, you haven't been able to get much going on Definitely something to learn there. You know, and they're not giant fish either. You know, biggest one's probably 10 or 12 inches, I would guess. So, you know, no fish, but so far the Mavlo's plume seems like a pretty decent rod for the money. You know, right around it's under 90 bucks, so under 100. It's got decent sensitivity. It feels really nice, comfortable in the hand. It's kind of surprised with the the grip. You know, it's in the 40s today and we didn't get a chance to feel what a fish feels like on it yet but I'll continue to fish it so you know check it out it's a I've enjoyed the the Mavlos delicacy it's Mavlos plume I think it's a, a, a pretty good budget option option for something just maybe a little bit nicer thanks for watching we'll see you out on the water I'm pulling out I was there for two hours fishing didn't feel like that long at all and I, you know that's the thing even on a day when you don't catch fish, it still beats work, right? It's a great way to spend a couple hours or even a couple days.